in the past we've had need for authority to, to make sure that you know people stay in the lines and Bitcoin kind of encodes that into the software itself. So there's not, not much to say against something that's a cheat proof, honest, transparent money system. I'm Naomi Brockwell for Reason TV, and I am here with Daniel and Nicholas Moras, who have just created a film about Bitcoin called The Rise and Rise of Bitcoin, and it's premiering today at Tribeca Film Festival. Bitcoin is the most subversive technology on the planet. This is a system that is growing around the entire world. The government, no matter how many guns they draw, cannot change a mathematical problem. I see the democratization of technology as being a really positive thing. The pressure to not screw up just gets bigger and bigger. You can basically put a bank in your pocket. That's pretty amazing. Congratulations, it's a wonderful film, I've watched it. Um, what made you two first get interested in Bitcoin in the first place? You two were brothers and you decided to make this film together. What first interested you? Came across an article and read about Bitcoin uh, in 2011, early 2011, and. I started looking into it, and uh, it just got more and got more and more interested in it, and uh, you know, started just following everything that was going on, reading the discussion forums, and uh, eventually got involved in, in Bitcoin mining. And uh, my brother, uh, you know, I was always talking to him about it, and he started to get interested in it. And yeah, he just he, he just kept telling me about uh, Bitcoin, and at first I was like, okay, it's cool, but I've always looked up to my older brother, and you know. Uh, the more he talked about it, the more I naturally just became intrigued by the subject matter. And after a while, I said, hey, this is really cool. And so we started talking about, hey, let's, let's make a little documentary. And it just slowly grew and grew and grew. And before you knew it, we had a really chance to make a much bigger film. Well, Bitcoin isn't exactly the most visual <laughs> thing. Right. But you guys did a great job in this film. What, what did you find were the biggest challenges in making a film about Bitcoin? One of the biggest challenges, I guess, for me was that it was, it was really more of a journalistic documentary just because we were constantly chasing something that was still happening. It wasn't like we had the story in front of us and then we could go back and retell it. It's still telling itself, so uh, that was the biggest challenge, I think, was knowing what stories to cover, what characters to go after, what was important when, and what's gonna stay relevant, you know, even from a, from a historical perspective. And then there's the challenge of just finding a way to entertain the audience and also explain what Bitcoin is along the way. Do you think that people really understand the full extent of the technology and what it's capable of? We wanna explain it to the point where people go, I get it, and now I wanna learn more. Mm -hmm. But if you go too deep into it, then I feel like you maybe lose people and it becomes less of a film and more of an informative piece. What I found interesting about the documentary as I was watching it was a lot of the key players in the film, they actually, by the end of the film, or currently, have been arrested or uh, bankrupted. Do you think this taints the idea of Bitcoin at all? I don't actually, because um, you know I, I look at Bitcoin as, as a technology. Um, and Bitcoin itself, you know, you should, it shouldn't have any kind of morality attached to it necessarily. Um, very much like, you know, email or any other protocol uh, that, that people use. Um, and I think over time, as people learn more about it, they kind of start to see that Bitcoin, the technology, is completely separate from all the externalities and how people are using it. In the film, you know, some of the people have been involved in some problems, but others, you know, are looking for a way to save money and make, you know, uh, do better sales in their stores or, you know, increase their... Um, you know, customer base. Um, and being that Bitcoin is such a new technology, we're just beginning to see all the different things that it can be used for. And it's only natural that the people that were the first ones to take the plunge and help pave the way for Bitcoin are going to run into hurdles and hiccups. Like, we look at it as these were the people that went out there and said, hey, I'm going to take a chance at something. I'm going to build a startup or I'm going to... Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's natural that, you know, you're going to have fallout. You're going to have people that have to go through the tough stuff to help pave the way for, for, bigger, for the bigger economy of Bitcoin. There's very much a regulatory atmosphere uh, shrouding Bitcoin at the moment. There's a lot of um, fear in the community and a lot of people being pushed offshore because they're just worried about the regulatory environment, especially in the United States. Do you think that the government actually has the ability to kill Bitcoin in its infancy before it really has a chance to take off? It's kind of hard to kill an idea uh, and a protocol. I mean, Bitcoin is some code and it's out there and it's not something that can be uninvented now. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a new, it's a solution to a problem that a lot of computer scientists have worked very hard trying to solve and it's, it's out there now. And so, you know, I think that there's a balance that, you know, governments are, are wary and obviously are concerned with, you know, um, legal use and, you know, consumer protections and things like that. But if they, you know, are un too unfriendly to it, it's just going to move elsewhere. And even some of the characters in our film have moved 
their businesses out of the United States uh, because the United States is kind of uh, not in the lead right now. Now the tech industry just moves at such an incredible pace. Um, would you consider that the Bitcoin protocol is actually itself already outdated when you have things like Bitcoin 2.0 and Ethereum in the works? Bitcoin is the first mover advantage mm -hmm. and it just has so many people behind it already that that's not going to change overnight. Even if there's better systems that are being put in place right now and people are experimenting, it's just that's the one that has all the momentum. I think there's a lot of hard people that are, or a lot of people that are working very hard to, to see that it succeed. You know, software can evolve. Software can continue to be improved. And if there's competitors, you know, there's nothing to prevent those you know new ideas from being implemented in, in Bitcoin itself. You know, I like that there's a lot of competition. I, I think that you know those you know, market solutions to those type th uh, types of things tend to you know, bubble up the good ideas. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I actually like to see that. I like to see a lot of different cryptocurrencies and because it's, it's opened a whole new you know, realm of ideas and all kinds of opportunities for new software development. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things about Bitcoin is that no one really knows who created it. And you talked a little bit about the mystery behind Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, Satoshi immediately went off the grid. So what do you think this says about the character that is Satoshi Nakamoto? Does this reveal anything about his identity, the type of person he is? Obviously, I think the one thing most people can agree on is Satoshi valued his privacy mm -hmm. and he was very careful. He uh, it seems like Satoshi, whether it's a person or a group of people, they, he or they had the foresight to see that, hey, if this thing really grows into a bigger system, it might be wise to kind of stay under the radar and not be a public figure. And, and I think it's a good thing. I think it's helped actually, you know, Bitcoin grow because there's not one person you can point to and say, this guy created it, let's talk to him and see why or, or, or her for that matter. I, I think that Satoshi probably just wanted to see the technology mature more. The amount of work is pretty obvious that Satoshi had been working on Bitcoin for a long time mm -hmm. and it's a, a lot of thought was put into it and I think it's natural for somebody to not want negative attention for their project uh, and to, you know, potentially be killed when it's still in its infancy. Right. And just to wrap up, I just want you to paint me a picture of what the world will look like in 10 years time and where does Bitcoin fit into that world? From the filmmaker perspective, it is going to change a lot of the, of the way things will function. How long that will be, I, I have no idea. But uh, it's, it's, it's a force and it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. If you look at it at its core, it's kind of hard to argue against a technology that essentially prevents cheating and prevents bad actors from you know, hurting it itself. Um, and you know, it, it's not that it's you know, an anti-authority authority kind of thing, it's that it just makes certain, certain uh, you know, in the past we've had need for authority to, to make sure that you know, people stay in the lines and Bitcoin kind of encodes that into the software itself. So there's not, not much to say against something that's a cheat-proof, honest, transparent money system. Uh, it's kind of, you know, there's, there's, uh, it's hard to argue against that as a, as a bad thing. Mm -hmm.